Hello and welcome back to Watch Your History, the podcast that covers all areas of history and archaeology, no matter how big or how small, how well known or how niche. I'm your host Kelly Hunter and today I'm going to be starting a little side series called History Of, which involves me, myself and I talking to you wonderful people about different things from history. As this is the month of Pride, I decided to kick off this series with talking about the history of Pride, the origin story of how the Pride marches started. Enjoy! Just a disclaimer, within any of the episodes, especially this one, there may be terms of phrases or events that happened that may be triggering to certain people and to current audiences with our current mindsets and ideas. The stuff that I talk about and the things that I will be saying is in the context of the time of when these events happened. It all began on the early hours of June 28th, 1.15 to 1.20 a.m. 1969. Plainclothes officers from New York Police Department arrived at a place known as Stonewall. Now this was a known gay club, but every now and again the police would raid it with stupid reasons. On this particular day the reason was that they had a warrant because they had found that they were doing illegal selling of alcohol. The raid went through the night. It started off reasonably peaceful, as peaceful as it can be, until an incident started to happen. Now this is a direct quote and it goes, the turning point came when the police had difficulty keeping a dyke in the patrol car. Three times she slid out and tried to walk away. The last time the cops suddenly heaved in, the crowd shrieked, Police brutality! Pigs! A few coins sailed through the air, escalated to nickels and quarters. A bottle, another bottle. Pine says, Let's get inside! Look ourselves inside! It's safer! This was by Howard Smith, talking about the full moon over Stonewall. One of the people that was there, July 3rd, 1969. That's all it was. Somebody had refused to go with the police and go quietly. And then everybody kicked off. The riots started. People locked themselves inside Stonewall. And as the time went by, more and more people gathered and blocked off the street until it turned into a full-on fight. With bottles being thrown, things being smashed, people being beaten... It was not a nice time for everybody. But it also was not the first time this happened either. Throughout the 1950s and 60s and probably even earlier, gay people have always fought in their own different ways to be seen and recognised for who they are and not to be discriminated against and not to be put on trial for the acts that they commit. Because by law, being homosexual was seen as a criminal offence. In some places, you would be referred to as a pervert. There were laws put in place that stopped people from being able to express themselves, to love who they loved, and clothes and other rules such as gender inappropriate clothing was put in place as well. Clothing such as women should wear frocks and men should wear suits, for example. But I'm going to take you a little bit further back than the riots of 1969. In Los Angeles in 1958, a riot broke out at a 24-hour donut cafe after police officers started harassing two queens. A situation quickly grew into a riot with anger bubbling up and things being thrown. That was in Los Angeles. Another event happened. On the 25th of April 1965, where a group of teenagers, homosexual teenagers, staged a sit-in when they were denied service before being homosexual and for wearing non-conformative clothing. The sit-in was very similar 
to the black civil rights movement that was also happening within this same time. A lot of people were taking inspiration for what they were doing because at the same time in the 1960s, the black civil rights movement were also staging sit-ins for not being served for being black. Homosexual individuals took inspiration from this and did the exact same thing in many places because they too were also not being accepted, not being ex allowed service. The stories of gentlemen going to places where they were given a pint, they've paid for their pint, and then upon the bartender finding out that they are gay, put his hand over said pint and prevents them from having it. To be homosexual in this time and earlier than this was seen as a disease that could be contagious and it could warp the minds of the young and it could change people just by looking at them. Now I'm no scientist but I can clearly tell you that being homosexual is not a, cont is not a contagious disease. To be homosexual simply means that you like people of the same gender or in some cases both genders or in some cases everybody. Be homosexual, or nowadays to be part of the LGBTQA plus society, means that you are wanting to represent who you are through your sexuality, through your sexual preferences, and through how you identify yourself. Today, we have non-binary people. We have bisexual people. We have pansexual people, we have trans people, we have a variety of people that are being ignored, persecuted against, and just seen as downright wrong. This is simply not the case. At the end of the day, it's not the LGBTQ plus society that is wrong, it is society that is wrong. But getting back to the origins of Pride for this month that we are currently in, I'm going to take you through some other events as well. The Pride March that happened first happened in 1970 and it happened between the 22nd and the 28th of June to commemorate the souls that were lost at Stonewall as well as to remember the events that happened at Stonewall. A full-on Pride March was accepted and happened in the United States. Ever since then, Pride marches happen pretty much around the whole of the world, mostly in Western societies. And we do this to be accepting, to show that they are here. But the Pride march that happened in 1970 is not the first time a gay march has ever happened. Aside from the sit-ins and the riots, which is unfortunately the more negative side of it, there has actually been peaceful protests as well, prior to the 1970 Pride March. In 1963, a gentleman known as Frank Kameny, I'm sorry I may be butchering that name, and eight Machinin Society of Washington members marched on Washington for jobs and freedom. A march organised by Bayard Rusting, who had previously been arrested for having sex with a man. And although Rusting had exposed himself at this march, 200,000 Americans still attended the march. This was back in 1963, so back before the Stonewall riots. Previous to that, between 1965 and 1969, a lesbian organisation held yearly peaceful protests called the Annual Reminder, again, emulating the same tactics of the black civil rights movement. They, they would dress in their Sunday bests with signs and then they would march. People of all colours were doing this. When it came to these riots, the people that tended to be the main target of these, aside from the obvious being homosexuals, 
the ones that were the clear targets of these raids and these persecutions tended to be drag queens, queer youths, lesbians, gender nonconformatists, and trans people. Mostly because of the way that they presented themselves, put themselves as a clear target to police brutality. Because as I already stated, it was illegal to wear gender inappropriate clothing. And when you are young and queer, you want to try and express yourself. You want to be able to be noticed as queer and not straight. So you may dress in a certain way to suggest to others that you are made of the same cloth. But jump forward to June the 28th, 1970. Thousands of LGBT Americans marched through the streets of New York saying, we are queer, we are here. The flag that everybody uses didn't actually come onto the scene until 1978. And it was created by a Gilbert Baker from San Francisco. And the reason why the pride flag is a rainbow, which even to this day some people find that offensive, is that every single colour means a different thing. So, for example, red means life. Orange means healing. Yellow means sunlight. Green means nature. Blue means serenity. And purple means spirit. Again, as time's gone on, the pride flag has changed to be inclusive to other people. So now the pride flag also has brown stripes on it, representing the black community. It now also has pink and purple stripes on it to represent the bisexuals. And it's also being more and more inclusive with each new generation, with new symbols, new colours, and various other things added to it every time to be more expressive and more accepting of different people. But before we close this off, I would like to mention one particular person who was the forefront of the riots happening in 1969 and this person is a Marshall P. Johnson, also known as Malcolm Michaels, Junior Johnson. Junior Johnson, or Marsh P. Johnson, was a drag queen and was a key figure in the Stonewall Riots. They were born in 1942 and died in 19. 92. And I feel this person, along with everybody else who were part of the Stonewall Riots, should be recognised. Some are still living today, some unfortunately have passed on, but if it hadn't been for them and the start of everything, we wouldn't have pride today. <laughs>